still actively putting Canadian coal miners out of work. The Canadian government, through one of its agencies, the Pension Plan Investment Board, was busy keeping Chinese coal miners working. The action announced today will reduce Canada's greenhouse gas emissions by more than five megatons by 2030. This is the equivalent of taking 1.3 million cars off the road. Our goal is to make Canada's electricity 90% non-emitting by 2030. We will help achieve this goal by amending existing regulations to result in the equivalent of phasing, a completely phasing out by 2030 traditional coal power. Provinces can choose to phase out coal entirely and replace it with lower emitting sources, such as Alberta's planning, or they can use carbon capture and storage technology. Oh, really? Well, the Liberal government's view that coal will kill us all in a fiery climate doomsday doesn't extend beyond Canada's soon-to-be ghost town coal communities. And Blacklock's reporter has all the details. I'll make the same disclaimer that I always do of Blacklock's. Their content sits behind a paywall, so I'm not going to give you the whole thing for free. If you want it, well, you're going to have to pay for it. However, here's the abbreviated must-know meat of this story, and I'm going to butcher some Chinese names here. Records show the Pension Plan Investment Board bought 21 shares in publicly traded China coal operators, distributors, and utilities, including 3 million in the Ping Ding Shan Tianan Coal Mining Company, 8 million in the Hu Lin Open Cut Coal Industry Corporation, 13 million in China Coal Energy Company Limited, operator of 12 mines, 14 million in China Resources Power Holdings Company Limited, distributor of coal in six Chinese provinces, and 17 million in Shanxi Meijin Energy Company limited. The board manages $392 billion in Canadian pension plan funds. Some $42 billion are invested in China, including shares in distilleries, film studios, shopping malls, breweries, banks, and airlines. Let's paraphrase real quick, shall we? The Canadian government, while heading up the self-flagellating performance art that is the powering past coal alliance of nations making electricity more expensive for their people, is also heavily investing in Chinese coal companies. So I am with the amazing Christiana Figueres. She was head of the UNFCCC and got us the Paris Agreement. Now working on a new initiative. What's your new initiative? to actually ensure that we're going to deliver on what we promised in Paris, because Paris is a very, very important achievement, but it will actually not have any impact on anyone unless we deliver the emission reductions that we need in a timely fashion, bending the curve of global emissions by 2020. So how are we going to do that? What's a good initiative? First of all, we're going to get rid of coal. Oh, I, we've, I've got an idea. We've got Powering Past Coal Global Alliance announced in What a good idea. There you go. Fantastic. That's part of it. That is a very important part of it. And then the rest, of course, is to move efficiency forward and actually to really understand that greenhouse gas emissions today are actually a proxy for global economic inefficiency, not global growth. Very good, and also a lot of pollution, so impact on human health. We need to move forward, we're in it together, so thank and you we're gonna for your do leadership. This. We're gonna continue we're gonna working do it. Two women working hard for the planet. That is some high level cringe right there, but that awkward video demonstrates that the coal phase out might actually just be like I said, performance art for the United Nations while Canadians struggle to keep the lights on. It's good for hugs from UN officials, but certainly bad for Canadian wallets. Chinese workers will have jobs in the coal industry, supported by Canadian money. But according to labor organizations, the Trudeau government has not moved forward on the promised so-called just transition away from good, reliable Canadian jobs in the coal industry. But the double standard well, it's a bit of a reoccurring theme with these liberals, isn't it? Last month, we learned the real story behind former Environment Minister Catherine McKenna's 2017 green tech trade mission to China. In the 360 pages of briefing notes and reports we got back through access to information, Catherine McKenna praised the Chinese for their work on climate change while 
China continues to use more coal than the rest of the world combined. McKenna brought with her companies from Canadian industry, including crooked Quebec-based engineering firm and perennial liberal darling SNC-Lavalin, who were all there to offer solutions that would keep China using coal for the indefinite future, while sacrificing entire Canadian communities on the altar of green energy. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, folks. Have you considered giving yourself the gift of the other side of the story? To treat yourself to a Rebel Premium subscription, go to premium.rebelnews.com.